What's happening? Welcome to episode one of the weekly hustle. I'm really excited to do this because it's been a lot. I've been thinking about content that really kind of hits home for me that has a purpose. I've been looking for that core piece of content for a long time. So I'm glad to be presenting this. For those that are watching, my name is Kevin Yee. I'm a former pharmacist, went digital nomad. So I do digital marketing, high ticket sales, all that sort of stuff, affiliate marketing. Yeah, I pretty much live a very remote life. And if you're wondering what the weekly hustle is, it's really where I break down three things. First thing is that is my goal to really share cool people, processes, tools, ideas for hustlers who want to be great. There's so many things that I'm discovering each day. For example, I actually found Notion the other day. I found Airtable and I was just sharing it with my community. So the more books, resources I can share to people that really impact my life, the better. Second thing, I want to give you the backstage pass uh, or the IRL in real life tutorial of, and document the process of the long term game of how to hit $10 million. You know, I'm looking at all these internet gurus out there and they're always talking about fast wins, fast wins, quick wins, make money quick. But the truth is, real businesses, they take time. I've been watching a lot, a lot of uh, people like Alex Becker, Gary V, and stuff like that. They always talk about the long term game. And this is what I truly believe in. In order for something to be great, it takes time for things to be built up. And so what better way than to document every single step of the way of $10 million for myself? You might be asking me like, hey, Kevin, how did you come up with 10 million? I actually didn't. Took it from Grant Cardone. Basically, think if you think about it like this, $10 million is 100K per year for the next hundred years. Think about that. How much of a financial abundance would you have? So if you can hit that cash flow goal, or you, if you can hit that goal, that um, money in the bank goal, then you can come from financial abundance, help more people out, create more opportunities as well, right? And in order to hit that, how am I gonna hit that? I need to hit a cash flow goal, a monthly cash flow goal of the net for the next 8.3 years of 100K per month totally doable in this online world. And I want to show you step-by-step step about how I'm doing it through this content, the weekly hustle. So I'm really playing the long-term game. I want to get the best talent in the world, win the, the, the hearts and minds of the next talent so we can create more cool stuff, more uh, great products for great people and whatnot. Third thing is that I really want to attract the next generation of great people to work on great products that impact real problems. So many, so like there's so much stuff out there, which is just to make a quick buck, make a quick buck, make a quick buck. But is that really making our world a better place? I don't think so. And so I don't know what I'm going to create in the future, but all I know is that you find the people first and everything will come later. It's from this great book, which I unfortunately, oh yeah. This great book, it's called From Good to Great. They talk about this concept of finding great people first. So really highly recommend that um, as well. Anyways, if you guys don't know the format of the weekly hustle, this week I'm going to be sharing about six things. I'm going to be sharing about what I'm reading, people I'm following, what I'm thinking about, what I'm quitting, how I'm challenging myself, and I'm going to answer a question, which I'm going to call the Ask Kevin Yee question. So if you guys want to shoot me a question or even updates on your life because I read every single email that comes through and I respond typically through video chat. I'll send you a Loom video or something like that. Uh, make sure to join uh, my email list. You can go to refugeehustle.com slash join and uh, email me there. If you also want to get the, the email version of this sent to your uh, email inbox every week, make sure to subscribe to that. And if you uh, aren't subscribed to this or you can't remember, oh, what is Kevin's URL for YouTube? Go to kevinyee.tv. It'll just redirect you to this YouTube page. So that's great. Um, first of all, question of the week. I'm behind on the latest music. So who are the rising top hip hop artists that you like to listen to? Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Joyner Lucas, uh, his ADHD album and whatnot. But honestly, I've been, been really, really behind on music. And I'm just looking for some pop and tunes. Like I listen, to, I love R&B. I love rap. Um, if you guys don't know the type of rap I like, I usually like 
21 Savage, like early Meek Mill. I love the H Town, like UGK and all. I, I love all sorts of hip hop, but if you guys got some good artists, even SoundCloud rappers, man, I'll listen to them. If you think they're hot, um, make sure to comment below. Let me know who's the ho hottest artist in your uh, Spotify is. So what am I reading? Recently, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't been really in the mood to read at all. I've been having a lot of those days where it's just like, man, I can't look at this book for more than 10 minutes, right? And so that was me essentially this week. So the only way I could get past one of the questions I was I had to ask myself is like, hey, Kevin, what is the point of even reading in the first place? Does it even make sense for what you're doing right now? I really had to switch my mind over to like, okay, it's not just reading for a sake of reading. Is what I'm reading applicable to what I'm doing right now? So I thought I'd share three books that, you know, that I'm currently reading and why exactly I'm reading. So if you guys don't know, I'm working on a few things right now. One, I am working on my high ticket sales agency uh, where I serve my high ticket clients. Actually, just the other week, I think we did about 30K in volume for my client. That's obviously not in my pocket, but that gives you a good idea. Take about what? 15% of that, that goes to me, I guess, right? And so that's how much I made. Actually, no, take half of that and then 15% because I got split it with my partner, but that's what we did last week. So not too bad, but I'm also working on kick-ass investing and working on, um, so I've rebuilt out the website and I'm working on my YouTube channel. So really think about these things. So keep these things in mind while I'm sharing it with you. In this segment, I'm going to talk about what I'm reading and why I'm reading it. So first book, Bam, we got cash advertising. Now, this book is really interesting. I read it years ago when um, I first got into affiliate marketing. Uh, if you guys don't know, I used to follow this guy. His name was Maylon Darris. I followed Charles Ngo and stuff. Maylon Darris recommended this book for, uh, for copywriting, right? Because you have to write headlines. You have to write things that are really uh, compelling to people. How do you get people from reading your content to actually taking action? Was opening up their credit cards or clicking a link or whatever, right? And so uh, this book is really great because they break down the human desires. It's a psychological aspect. Talk about concepts like the life force eight and then the nine learn um, human wants. So I decided to uh, reread re this book recently because I need to touch up my copywriting skills for kick-ass uh, investing, right? Uh, hashtag go check out kickassinvesting.com. Um, I believe at this time is the shooting kickass investing 1.0 is out, but I'm working on a 2.0. So, uh, stay tuned guys, uh, with that, but been working on the headlines and all that really, really great book. Definitely read it. If you are an aspiring copywriter. Now, the second book I'm reading right now is one of my favorites. I did a review on it. He's my first online ment online mentor. His name is Ramit Sethi. And I love Ramit because he's really a breath of fresh air. He does not focus on quick wins. He's focused on systemized daily action type of things. He's a long-term, he's a long-term guy. And guess what? No one calls him a scam. One thing I realized about the digital marketing world is like the shorter that you try to sell someone, the faster you are to call someone a scam. But when you're trying to make real impact toward people, you need to play the long-term game. This is what Ramit's done. I've actually followed Ramit since 2007 when I was in college and took his most of his internet marketing classes uh, online. So I've done his copywriting course, all how to launch, uh, zero to launch, everything. I mean, even his new class earnable, even though I know most of the content. But one of the things that I go to Ramit for is his psychology. He does the best market research ever. He understands his target market super, super well. So that's why, bam, I decided to pick up this book again. Uh, really not so much to learn how to invest because I read this book back in 2009. I actually have the first edition over there. Uh, Ramit actually signed this, uh, this specific copy for me. So it was really kind of cool. I can't find the, oh yeah, here it is. Um, if you guys take a look at it, he actually signed it over here. I'll show it to this camera. But Kevin, here's to a rich life, Ramit Sethi. So really interesting guy. But he got, the reason why I read this was to put myself back in the mindset of a new investor. I forgot how scary it is to invest. 
I also did a YouTube review too, so I'll link it in the description below and all that, or I'll do a card or something. Okay. Um, so really great book, really great book for personal finance and all that. And um, even though my investing approach is pretty similar, there are some things different. So um, yeah, that's that. Third book I'm reading is this book, my favorite, one of my favorite positioning books. Again, it's about solving a real problem, not making a quick buck. And that's where I um, really resonate with Jay Abraham because, you know, uh, he's one of the great minds in the marketing world and master of positioning. Uh, even Dan Pena talks about this guy, even though you might not like Dan Pena, everybody is on pretty much the same page as Jay Abraham. And he's like a part of the older generation of marketing guru i wouldn't call him a guru but he's really mastered the art of positioning and if you don't know what positioning is it's like how do you come into a certain interaction uh how, how to approach a certain interaction right he's one of the masters at it he's probably not the best technical marketer right he doesn't know i'm not sure if he knows what's happening in facebook ad marketing but what he is a master of, of is are the timeless principles of digital or, or of marketing in general and positioning. He like this book has taught me to, to think better, think more masterfully, think more of from the client's point of view or your customer. He talks about specifically in this book, he talks about how the difference between a client and customer. Do you guys know? Put it in the comments if you guys don't know, but really a client is taking someone under your pr uh, protection while a customer is just a one-time transaction type of thing. How many times have we been treated like a customer? Does it make us feel really good? No, it makes us feel transactional. Humans buy um, things from humans and they tend to go with the more humanistic aspect as well. So I love it. This book is a great book of really psychology as well. Uh, fun fact about Rami and Jay Abraham, they actually... Rami actually paid Jay Abraham back in the day to uh, for positioning advice. It was about 20 G's. I kind of wish I, I went to go meet Jay, Jay Abraham. He's still alive. I might do it in the future as well, but really interesting stuff. I'll admit to you guys as well, this is a book I haven't like fully read, but every single time I open it, I'm just like, oh man, there's just a new concept that I always pick up, right? Reading this book and it's like, I always have that aha moment. So I'd highly recommend that you read this book. Uh, I'll leave links as well uh, in below as well. But one thing, one thing about Jay is that he simplifies the processes. He teaches you uh, existing frameworks to think better. For example, like, you know, you ask any guru or any younger entrepreneur, right? Hey, what are the ways to increase revenue to your business? A uh, younger, less experienced person might be like, hey man, you should do Facebook ads. You need to do door-to-door -door knocking. You need to do YouTube ads or LinkedIn marketing. <clears throat> but Jay would break that things down into core timeless principles. Like for example, he, he would answer, there's three things. You could either increase the number of clients that you have. You could either increase the average sale per client. So <clears throat> oh, sorry, you can increase the average size of sale per client, or you can increase the number of times clients return and buy again. This is also known as lifetime uh, value for a customer. He makes it less daunting by simplifying these concepts, making it very digestible. He talks like a normal human being too, and he focuses on the few, not the many. So when you can focus on a few things, not 10 billion things, you can, it'll help you take action and action is the key to this game as well. And something I've been working on recently. All right, person I'm following. So one of the people I am following right now is someone by the name of Alex Becker. Um, also been watching Gary Vee, but Alex Becker, um, and you guys might be surprised, like Kevin, you follow Alex Becker. Hold up. If you give me the next 30 seconds, well, if you guys watch his uh, videos, you'll know what I mean by that. But anyways, um, I actually found Alex through my good friend, Matt Tram, uh, his name, uh, you might know him as engineer truth. Uh, he told, he was the first one that put him on the radar for me because we were talking about digital marketers and online gurus and stuff. And to be honest, I wasn't really a big fan of his content because he recommended the get rich quick lifestyle, something that I'm totally against, by the way, uh, life with the Lambo in the background and stuff, but what was really interesting. So me and a few of our friend, 
few of my friends, my close friends that we talk every day, we found him again recently and we started loving his content. Why is that? Well, here, here's he he actually did something pretty crazy. He actually sold his house, sold his Lambo, sold everything, got rid of everything, no furniture, no nothing. Why? Well, he's he's woke now. He decided to go with the life of minimalism and dopamine detoxing. And these are the things that I started delving into his content. Every single night before I go to sleep or in the morning, I'll listen to that dopamine detoxing video, which I'll link somewhere in the cards or in the link below. The thing I like about Alex Becker is that he's so focused at what he does and he's not about the quick gains. Surprisingly, what you would think by watching his content, but he focuses on being great. And how do you reduce noise to, to really hone in on your craft? How do you be great in... How do you be great at a particular skill set? So I've been watching a lot of his videos, especially around minimalism and dopamine detoxing. So if you are unfamiliar with dopamine detoxing, here's here's it's this pretty much. This is the idea by restricting most of our the things that make you happy or pleasurable, right? Social media, video games, prawn, um, gaming, uh, or even food. You can reset your brain. This idea. It's, it's kind of like a very simple idea of how to kind of reset your brain so that you're not so addicted to these things. And I know it sounds kind of woo woo. So I decided to try it since watching his content. I've really been focused on implementing some of his suggestions as well. And so these are, and it's really focus, helped me focus on like, Hey, what are some assets or what's some areas of my life where I can just like, where I can just fast, right? Or where I can just minimalize, right? If you guys don't know, I actually downsized my apartment. This apartment is probably like 300 square feet. It looks pretty big, right? But it's really not that big because, you know, you're not seeing the rest of it. Literally, I could probably touch my uh, my kitchen over there, right? I'm not that far away. But it really helped me focus on um, fasting three areas in my life. And I want to share those three things with you. All right. First thing is food. Um, rather than I've been fasting with food, playing with my food choices, food timing, rather than deciding, Hey, what is Kevin going to eat today? I've simplified my food choices to nine items. I could probably simplify it even more, or I just get rid of it altogether. I've been experimenting with 24 hour fast, 48 hour fast as well. And I've been focusing on, Hey, what requires the minimal amount of, uh, prep time and what is going to help fuel my brain for productivity and really taking action, keeping my energy up. I'm actually shooting this at 4.53 p.m. Normally, I'm kind of drained at this time, but being able to feel my body or not eat at all has been really helpful. I made also a hard rule not to eat until I'm done working. So, you know, it doesn't take away the blood flow from my brain to my stomach. And when you get the itis, have you guys ever had that? Like when you eat, like especially carbs, man. Like, dude, I remember I used to eat like, carbs for lunch in high school. And I feel so tired. I used to fall asleep in all my classes all the time. I was a really not bad student, but I had this, that reputation, especially senior slump. I was senior snoozing all the time. And so I make this hard rule, uh, to not eat until I'm done. So usually I'll wake up around anywhere from three to eight o'clock. It really depends on how much work I've done in the other day, how exhausted I am. And then I won't eat until like, I'll try not to eat until seven or at least th three to seven or something like that. Right. Um, I'll eat within that window, depending. I use this app called zero. So that's really helpful for me. The second area I've been really focused, uh, fasting is my focus, right? So I decided this week to eliminate projects that I wasn't in love at love with wasn't good at or made money for me. Those are the three things. I need to find the intersection of all three of those things for me to double down on those things. And uh, by eliminating those things that didn't fit one of the, those criteria, I doubled down on the things that hit all three, which led me to three things. Uh, YouTube, kick-ass investing, and really high-ticket sales. This week, I doubled down on high-ticket sales, right? Um, double my fulfillment hours. We're going to make tons of money this week and help tons of people. I, I'm not a money person. I'm, I'm an impact person. Second thing, I doubled down on kick-ass investing. So I learned how to use Kartra to set up all these emails and I made the, I'm making the course better. I want to make it the world a world-class course 
on teaching people how to invest and make it the easiest way for people to invest. So go to kickassinvesting.com. Uh, you can even go to kickassinvesting.com slash YouTube. Shameless plug. Oh, um, <laughs> and finally, YouTube. I was really struggling with this. I was like, what am I going to do for my YouTube? I feel like I'm pulling straws, but went back to the drawing board, went back to Gary Vee and really refined my process of about how I'm going to market my YouTube channel. Um, third thing I'm, I'm fasting is fapping. And I know I use this word because it catches your attention. But when I say fapping, I'm talking about all media, right? Not just the hub, the P hub, right? Uh, but also talking about YouTube for pleasure. Um, it was really weird. So I actually uninstalled YouTube on this uh, phone. And um, what was really interesting about that was that uh, I found myself opening up my phone all the time to check out Joe Rogan podcast, Stephanie Sue, these gaming channels that I check or the hub. And it was always when I want to escape away from my work, when I want to procrastinate, when I was about to do something hard, I would always go to it. And then when it wasn't here, I was like, oh, damn, I really am addicted to this. And so it's really helped me kind of reset my brain and just focus on the hardest things first in the day so I can relax later. But, you know, when you fast so long, obviously you can't just not eat forever. Um, you're gonna, you need some downtime, you need some rest. So on the weekends, usually I'll take a break from these things. Um, but usually Monday is back to normal. So if you're new to Alex Becker, I highly suggest that you check out his video about why he sold his Lamborghini and decided to, he decided to live in an apartment with nothing in it. And I suggest that you watch his dopamine uh, detox video as well. Really great stuff. One thing about Alex that is really unique is that he speaks from experience. You know, his videos aren't the typical cookie cutter bullshit. He's very open about, about selling you. He's just like, you know what? I don't have anything to sell beginners because I hate teaching to beginners. Um, my, my end goal is to sell you 10 years down the line. It made me really think like for myself, I don't want to sell be like, my goal is not to sell you on this video. I'm here to sell you 10 years down the line. I love that. I think playing the long-term game, you need to, you can't come into the game with the entitlement of trust. Trust needs to be built. People are just rushing the interaction too much. Right. And I, I, I feel like Alex's game is like really on point when it comes to that. And also I would definitely check out his video. If you're into essentialism, uh, minimalism and business as well, I think you'll really enjoy his content. Um, I've been, it's been a long time since I've found a business guru that I really enjoy. And Alex is one of them. He's kind of, if you guys get offended by like uh, sarcasm and all that, probably not for you, but I'm really enjoying his content. So I'm pretty sure that you might enjoy his content too. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what I've been thinking recently. And this is the one thought I've been thinking a lot about. It's called minimal mastery. You know, if you guys open your YouTube, I don't know if I'm just getting targeted or anything like that, or it's the YouTube channels I've been watching, but you probably see that there's a rise of internet, internet gurus out there, but very few of them focus on mastery, right? Um, after listening to a lot of like Alex Becker, that was the person I was following, uh, and seeing his focus on everything kind of aligning to be great. I started thinking about it more about like a lot of the people who are teaching these things on online. Right. And so I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's wrong to sell something if you can solve someone's problem. But what I'm, what I'm running into a lot of time is this dilemma of like, you know, maybe someone's one or two steps ahead of you. Yes. A blue belt. Like maybe they're a blue belt. I do jujitsu, right? So I'll use a belt analogy. A blue belt is very competent. Uh, I'm a blue belt, by the way. You can probably handle most people off the street, but you haven't hit the level of mastery. What would you feel more confident about? A blue belt teaching you or a black belt teaching you, right? And I was like, there's a huge gap in this market. A lot of people, they don't focus on being great first. And so I started asking myself, like, what am I great at? One of the biggest downfalls for me is that I have like eight business ADD. I focus on too many things at once and I get burnt out. And so I'll be honest with you guys. I actually really recently had thoughts about launching a high ticket sales program or how to like hustle, like hustle Academy, um, how to start a hustle and make your first one K with your first side hustle. And even though I could teach these things, I'm choosing to hold off on it 
maybe launch it five, 10 years down the line to see, you know, because really, I don't want to. Yes, I could be teaching these things. I could be helping people as a blue belt level. But where I want to be is come at a black belt not, uh, level because I can help more people more uh, impactfully. I want to crack the code my, uh, myself first before sharing it to anyone else. You know, and that's just the thing that it's not right or wrong, but you'll see a lot of these, especially digital marketers who, you know, maybe they've only had one or two years experience, man. Is that really enough to, to really help people? Not saying that the content isn't valuable, but there's too many of these type of uh, programs, coaches, influencers, whatever you want to call them, gurus, right? There's too much of that out there. It's really hurting the info market, the education market, because there's not enough emphasis on mastery, right? And it goes back to, to say, even though I'm really good enough to be dangerous at these things, have I been doing these things long enough to be great? I think about, again, jujitsu. Does that mean like I'm good? I can handle a white belt, right? But could I handle my own against a black belt? No freaking way. And keep in mind, there will always be someone that is better than you. Uh, I, I really think there's a really lost art of being great first and then teaching. Then you've earned your stripes. Then, then you can do it. That's why I decided to double down on investing because I've been investing 10 years. Am I Warren Buffett good? No, he's like a freaking red belt, like Elio Gracie type of uh, guy, you know, like they're, they're at a different level. But at this point, I've been investing long enough and I have the track record to, uh, to just teach people to invest because I've seen everything out there. I've been studying it since I was a little kid. And um, I think it's now like I've kind of earned my stripes to kind of show what I've learned over the last few years and just keep things super, super simple for things. Just because you solve a problem doesn't make you an expert. And that's something that's lacking these days. So I looked into, I looked in within myself and I was like, Hey, Kevin, what are you a master at? What are you uh, good at? And the two things that came to mind was pharmacy. It was doing it for 12 plus years, right? Or 12 years and investing. And since I probably don't want to, there's nothing I could sell to like for pharmacy. I decided to double down, focus and focus on building great things with great people for great people as well in terms of investing first. Not going to be my last thing, but that is the number one thing I am going to focus on first. Let's get some water. Oh my God, I'm dying. We are like 30 minutes in. <clears throat> so what am I quitting? Um, there's really three thoughts when it ter comes in terms of quitting. Again, I was reading this great book from good to great. Um, and then it talks about how great businesses, they don't focus on doing more. They focus on eliminating what they're not doing. A to do list or a what not to do list is just as important as a to do list. If not more important, here are three things that I am quitting as well. So first thing I quit reading for pleasure. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it was just really, really hard for me to sit down and spend 10 minutes reading a book. It was really hard to justify that. I realized right now I'm in a hustle mode. I'm in an action mode, right? Um, so I decided, hey, adapt into it. Like sometimes, have you ever had those days where it's like some days you just want to daydream or have a more grandiose vision? Other days you just want like rise and grind, rise and grind, right? And so for me, I've been spending less time reading and more time implementing. I actually even took that off my uh, my to-do checklist in the morning, my morning routine where I normally read for about 10 to 60 minutes, right? Six zero for an hour. I decided to cut that out altogether. If I do read, it's for a purpose. And like I said, I went through those books as well that I showed you guys earlier. If it, I do read, it's for a purpose. Like I said earlier, I read a copywriting book because I want to write killer headlines. I wanted to do a positioning book so I could really position my pitch when it comes in terms of high ticket sales and all that sort of stuff too. And guess what? The best part is I don't beat myself up if I don't read at all because I made the decision up front not to read as well. I mean, everybody will tell you knowledge, knowledge, not knowledge. knowledge is great. Okay. But supply knowledge and the knowledge, the action that you take from knowledge that's going to get you to where you want to go. You can think about a six figure, seven figure business all day, but unless you put 
the the finger to the keyboard or the pen to the paper if you're OG then nothing is ever going to happen so that's kind of like that's that's one of the things it's important to realize that when you're in these phases like when you are in hustle mode that you recognize it so you can pr prioritize the things that matter balance is within the extremes like I was watching Gary Vee the other day and he was talking about how like you know double down on your business right who says you can't go back to your business Go back to writing your book three months down the line after you stashed all this cash. You can spend two years doubling down on it. Sometimes I feel like if you if you do a little bit of everything, you get nothing done. So it's just food for thought. Uh, second thing I quit recently was my hustle uh, academy. Uh, I put that on the back burner. I might upload the um, the the lead magnet of how to find your perfect side hustle just so that you guys can have that. But thought a lot about what Alex Becker said and talking about uh, his focus on being great. And while I can help people, like I mentioned earlier, while I can help people start their own side hustle, I want more experience, maybe up to five to 10 years before I even open up something like this. I, when I do do this, I want to make sure that I have a hundred percent focus and that I can help people um, not at just like the white belt level, but at the black belt, like higher at the higher, more advanced levels too. And that only comes from one thing, growing my businesses, right? So that's the number one thing. Um, number three, I also quit working weekends. So uh, I told you about what I'm down, double downing on. I'm double downing on kick-ass investing. I'm doubling downing on long-form content for YouTube. I'm down, double downing on um, my high-ticket sales uh, academy as well, right? Or high-ticket sales clients as well. Since I'm doubling down, it's taking a lot out of me. So I need time to rest and recover. So I double down my output on the weekend, uh, weekdays, and then I completely turn off on the weekends. I typically do a dope, like I just shut off my phone. Um, not to say I binge watch like shows, but I catch up on shows that or content that I really like. So the other day I was watching some gaming things. I was watching some, um, some Ask Gary V. I was watching Alex Becker, just really thinking grandiose things. I also read Good to Great, and I took myself on a uh, sad Corona date, I guess. Like, I went in my car, and um, I went in my car, drove to get some great vegan Thai food that Stephanie Sue recommended, and uh, chilled in my car and just wrote out some thoughts. And that's actually one of the reasons why I'm shooting this today, because... I came up with that initial idea to do something like the weekly hustle to take something that is already existing and turn it into a show, right? I want to make it as interactive as possible. That is, that is something that came out from taking weekends off. We talk about hustle, hustle, hustle. Sometimes we forget, Hey, we need to take 10 steps back, man. Sometimes the answer isn't to take more work um, or do more work. You got to allow your time, your yourself time to think time to write time to be creative plan out processes, big ideas, write down your uh, purpose on this planet. Two tools that I love using notion. Um, if you go to refugee hustle.com slash notion, if you go to refugee hustle.com slash air table and, uh, whimsical, maybe refugee hustle.com slash whimsical. I'll leave the links below, but if you want these tools, these are my favorite, favorite tools. I also use Miro too, but haven't been using that as much. I like Whimsical a lot more and just writing down my ideas. So those are the three things that I've been quitting. How I'm challenging myself. There's three, there's really four things that I've been challenging myself uh, this past, this past week. And the first thing that I've been challenging myself is really doing a 48 hour fast. I, I don't know what made me decide it. Maybe it's just being inside all the time. I was like, damn, I'm getting fat. I need to, I need to get some sort of mental clarity. And plus, like, I felt like I was getting a, addicted to like food, fast food and all that sort of stuff all the time. So in the beginning of the week, last week, I went on a 48 hour fast. I was starving for most of the day for almost every single hour, but it's nothing a little, uh, Vietnamese coffee in my refugee hustle mug didn't solve as well. So, um, by the way, refugee hustle.com slash shop, <laughs> shameless plug. Um, but by the second day, man, I started feeling the cognitive effects that everybody was raving about. And I haven't, I haven't done a 48 hour fast since my pharmacy days too. So, uh, just, just recent, like I said, this concept of dopamine detoxing 
and really um and really simplifying your life as well second thing i i've been going over this concept of dopamine detoxing and i'll be talking a little bit more about this on my youtube channel it helped me become uber productive so i quit prawn i quit masturbation i uninstalled youtube i fasted for 18 hours a day by eliminating all these distractions in my life there's literally nothing to do besides work on my business because everything is uninstalled and it's helped me focus a lot more Set, third thing that i've been really doing is double downing on kick-ass investing um this week made some real big strides man i i uh rebuilt my website i rebuilt the funnel i redid the emails on kartra right i had to take the time to learn kartra because it was so frustrating i freaking hated it i was like drive me crazy but i learned it i figured it out i can build a page really quickly i gotta admit doing doubling down on on kick-ass investing man i'm not the most patient guy especially when it comes to tech tools but I forced myself to play around with it. Um, and I, I can say after investing that initial time after learning tools, I can build a solid website in 10 minutes. Not too bad, not too shabby because I was definitely not the tech person before ever. So there's that. Second thing, I actually doubled my output for my high ticket sales business, right? For the last two weeks, um, me and my closing partner have been top five for profitability for our client. So at first I was kind of reluctant to take on more work. Um, I've been very, one thing about me, you guys, I'm very protective of my time. And so my partner was like, I want to make more money and stuff. And so as a, as a leadership, right, you have to be very cognizant of the people around you, what you want to do. And I was like, okay, I had to kind of motivate myself to open up more hours. How is this going to impact me? How can I free up more time so I can double down on this and how it can fuel everything else. And so what I want to do is take all this extra money that I'm going to be making, reinvest it back into this channel to increase the production value, all that. I'm actually shooting with a new camera because of my hard work. It's called the GH5. It's one of David So's favorite cameras, by the way. I It goes back to this one concept of mastery, right? Whenever you're just reluctant to do things, you just go like, hell, I need the extra reps anyways to get to mastery. We'll see how this pays off next week. I'm pretty excited. Uh, we're on track for making, man, I hope we have a four or five K week each, by the way. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked. All right. Now we're in the next section. Ask Kevin Yee. So this is where I take, uh, I'll, I'll usually prioritize emails first. So if you guys send me an email, I'll answer one of your questions on this weekly hustle. If not, I'll take one of the questions from my weekly stream. So make sure to catch my weekly stream every single Sunday at 6 PM. Pacific Standard Time on Sunday, by the way. And maybe your comment will be featured on Ask Kevin uh, on this weekly hustle segment as well. So today I have a comment by Love Love143. How much do you think a private pharmacy owner can make? Well, keep in mind, by the way, Love Love143, 1433. Uh, Ray J, I think of that Ray J song for some reason. That tells you how old I am. But anyways, um, I think an important thing to keep in mind is that I've never owned my own pharmacy. So I'm not the best person to talk to or ask when it comes to this sort of stuff. I think the, but if I were, if you were to ask me directly, I think the better questions are, hey, one, is it still profitable to open up a pharmacy in 2020 given the landscape of pharmacy? How, and second question is, how scalable is this business model, especially with PBMs, DIR fees, clawbacks, and all that sort of stuff? I, I think the key to getting better answers is really taking the time to be resourceful, look up, uh, and ask better questions. So I did a quick research on Reddit, found this one post on Reddit, and I thought the answers were interesting. So I found this OP question, original poster. Is opening up a an independent pharmacy still profitable? This person who said, I just found out today that due to a buyout, my chain is closing and I'm going to be out of a job. I've developed some amazing patient relationships in the last five years and been at my store for 11 years with the company altogether. When I first learned about the buyout, I did a, I did a lot of research in, in, into independent pharmacy ownership, have contracts with accountants, attorneys, designers. The big question is, regarding getting a loan to do it. If I did this, is, it pro is this still profitable? I hear horror stories about terrible reimbursements, DIR fees, PBMs, making it all but impossible 
to open an independent. I feel like if I were going to do it, this would be the time for me personally. But I don't know if the time is right for new independents, the way things are in the industry or not. I need to be able to pay my, pay my bills and take care of my family. Um, and I thought the answer to this question was really interesting. Uh, we have this answer. I own and operate an independent. We've been open for almost three years now. I'd be happy to answer any sort of questions you like to PM me. It's tough competing with the chains. Advertising is, is expensive and contracting with PBMs is kind of a bitch, but it can be done. You can make a living owning your own pharmacy. One of one word of warning though is be careful how you set your hours. Most likely you won't have all the days off at, at for the first 1.5 to two years if you do it by yourself and you'll be taking an initial pay cut. We are open nine to six on weekdays, nine to one on Saturday. I always take crap about not being open longer, especially weekends, but I have a life outside of work. Interesting. This this answer was more interesting um, by Cleo Road. A lot of noise on this page. Yes, you can be profitable, but even very profitable in an independent pharmacy. Not as easy as it used to be, but very realistic. Buying groups, wholesalers will be tripping over themselves to help you get open and get your business. So that's not a worry. Locate as close to a busy chain store as you can. Chances are they're not providing service level that you will be able to. So being able to provide that, side note, being able to provide that intimacy for a business will, is your USP. Be prepared to work a lot of hours the first few years. I've been in business for 15 years and don't regret a moment. So really interesting. Um, I think one of the best questions that this person kind of uh, addressed was like, how do you make it happen? It's not if you can, but how can you do it? And uh, I also asked my friend Jenny, still waiting her answer, not sure if she's going to respond to me with that. She's like, I don't know. And so I asked her a follow-up question about, hey, how do you, like, what do you think about opening up a pharmacy based off what you know so far this year? Uh, or what is it, would you still recommend opening up a pharmacy in 2020 uh, knowing what you know now? So we'll see what she says based off her answer. TLDR version, uh, it is from what everyone is saying is still is possible to open up a pharmacy. And when you go into any sort of business, there is no set amount you can make. Think about it like this. You can always open up another pharmacy. But the real questions I would ask are, why is opening up a pharmacy important to you? How is starting up a pharmacy going to get you to your goals? And do you have the right people, processes, tools, and leadership skills to start and scale pharmacy in 2020? If not, how are you going to fill up those gaps? Uh, and what are those gaps to begin with? I think those are the right questions. Anyways, guys, if you guys, that is the weekly hustle. If you guys have a question that wants to be featured, make sure to subscribe to refugee hustle slash join or sorry, refugee hustle.com slash join. Uh, I am creating a, um, I am creating a podcast version of this. So this version will be ripped over to a podcast. Um, so I'm working on that. And I'm also, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it on the weekly hustle. If you guys like this format, please comment below and all that. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to this. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week on the weekly hustle. Man, this was fun. My throat is sore as fuck. All right, guys. I will talk to you guys later. Take care. Peace. Bye.